sorry, I accidentally deleted the video I posted up a few hours ago, so I'm gonna re-upload it, and hopefully you guys will still enjoy it. That is all. Welcome back to Cryptos Are Us. I am George, or all George. So I'll, I'm filming this uh, from the plane, um, and I have some <laughs> some horrible things to to share uh, with my experience with Air France. But before that, I know what you guys, a lot of you guys were panicking yesterday, wondering what's going on with Bitcoin. So I'm going to share. There's only a couple things that happened yesterday. I know that yesterday I was very bullish in my video. In fact, I've been bullish for a long time. But unfortunately, right away when the US market opened, things started going down. So we had two things that happened yesterday. Number one, Grayscale unfortunately up there selling once again. They sold like 133, 135 million. Uh, the day before also 130, 40 million. So unfortunately, Grayscale just does not want to stop. Or whoever, whoever owns Grayscale sales uh, shares, I don't know why, they just keep on selling. So not sure if the, the inflows exceeded the outflows. It seems like it didn't because as soon as market opened, um, it started going down. So that is number one. Number two, also we had a new somewhat of a war that may be brewing in the Middle East between Iran and Israel and the US may be getting involved with that as well so maybe that had something to do with it uh, those are the really only two things or you could say it had nothing to do with those things that we're just bouncing within range right Bitcoin has been doing this weird thing between 63 and 70 thousand and we did hit 70 thousand again a little bit above and came back down so we're right around 67 so not too bad, but we did fall down quickly to like 65, and I was eating dinner at that, around that time, and everyone around me was going nuts. Uh, had you DCA'd, you would have done pretty well, because now we're up uh, 2,000 points since then, right? So it's one of these three things. Uh, you know, does, does the dip change my thesis or narrative or my bullishness? No, no, it's, it, it's going to happen. We're seven days away. We're seven days away from the having event, and I think it's the most bullish thing coming up. Okay, I know grayscale selling sucks. It's going to stop eventually, but as of right now, we just gotta we gotta you know just wait it out. Pretty much weigh it out. Um, and I don't know about this war thing, but you know overall, wars are never good. They're never good, but. I don't know if it's gonna break out into war. I don't really know the details, but I do know that something happened in the Middle East, so maybe that's something to do with it. But you know what? I am in. Um, I'm in this airplane because I'm flying to Dubai, and I'm hearing so many good things about Dubai. Uh, so many people I talk to, so many projects and and other influencers, uh, they will be in Dubai. So token 2049, you know, they made a big splash in Singapore last year in crypto winter. Now they're doing two conferences in Dubai and Singapore, and this is not crypto winter anymore. So I think it's going to be absolutely fantastic. So I'm looking forward to my trip. And of course, they're two hours ahead. So now my schedule becomes even nuttier. Uh, so I, ha I would have to put out a video around 5 p.m. to equal 8 5 30 p.m. to equal 8 30 a.m. for you guys so but I'll try I'll continue to try and I'm gonna try to film at some of these fancy uh, dinners and parties and events and and even at the conference and show you guys what's going on with them uh, so that's what's going on as for my experience I just said I had a horrible tremendous uh, bad experience with Air France I don't know what happened um, the overall the, the you know, the, the airport is really nice, at least the departure area. When I came here, it was really jam-packed. Um, it looked like it was a small airport. Maybe it was a different section, but uh, the international departure place is really, really nice. Here's a here's a pro tip, okay? When you get in, finally if you get in, all the luxury stores are there. So if you've been like trying to like shop, if you ever go to Paris and you're trying to shop at all the luxury stores like Gucci and LV and Dior and Chanel and Hermes, um, they're all at the airport and there's no one there and it's tax-free. So you don't have to 
you don't have to like worry about getting this form and then going to scan it and then if it doesn't scan right you have to give the item to the custom like you don't have to go through none of that so if you guys ever fly international out of Paris pro tip leave some time ahead of your flight because you can you can shop at all the major even they have Rolex they even have Tiffany or even though Tiffany's not big in Paris but they have Burberry they have every single luxury store in the terminal uh, inter international terminal and it's tax free right no more forms to fill out nothing like that and another thing they told me is if you're worried about carry on bags and stuff they have some kind of rule no matter what you buy in those stores they have to allow you to take it onto the plane another pro tip uh, but anyways that that was all good and everyone's really nice but man uh, so obviously I, I'm in business class so I'm I have priority boarding but still the terminal for my plane changed a couple times finally okay we settled one and I thought I was boarding the plane no I took the stairs down all the way to the runway then I got put into a bus this never happened to me like I've flown a lot many years it's always just straight onto the plane I've never ever had to go down the stairs go on the runway get on this bus then we were driven to this other part of the airport I took, it was like a 15 minute drive it was pretty long now when we got to where wherever we got to it's just a plane sitting there in the middle and then we you have to manually walk it up but that's not the thing that's not the only thing uh, we were stuck on the bus not only the 15 minute ride but another 15 minutes on in it and they had no AC they didn't tell us to open the windows even when we arrived we just sat there and even the driver just kept the door closed we all like just forced the door the uh, the windows open um, it was it was a sauna everyone everyone was just sweating sweating their balls off finally when we got off we finally got into the plane and now it's looking a little better oh thank you I just got this I just got handed this uh, so that experience is not good uh, uh, my two counterparts they're not flying first class but uh, they're they're still stuck on a bus <laughs> waiting to come in so this whole thing and and you know the thing is uh, carry on I guess in France it's very low weight only 12 kg so that's only like 25 pounds so they had, you know normally in the US you know you have a backpack or something or carry on luggage um, the weight is a lot more so no one uh, no one ever cares over here they forced Josh and Scott to check in their backpacks so now they and the check-in price was a hundred euros so now they just paid a hundred euros more that they didn't anticipate. I mean, so that also kind of sucks. So pro tip, if you do have carry-on bags, make sure they're lightweight or you're forced to check in. Um, so yeah, so I mean, I don't think uh, we'll fly Air France again. <laughs> we should have just flown Emirates, which I will be flying Emirates on my way home. But uh, I guess now that I'm on the plane, service has been good. People are polite. This pod is bigger than United for sure. Let me show you. So I got a TV here. Look at, I got my shoes off. I got I got a pillow and a blanket and I could go all the way down. Very wide, much wider than United. I couldn't sleep um, when I was coming to France here. So I got a remote and then some buttons here. Uh, I got this little pouch and I got all my stuff ready. And uh, it's, it's overall, it's a pretty, pretty spacious pod. So, yeah, so this is not an overnight flight. So uh, for me, it's, it's like a seven hour flight in the middle of the day. We, we lose a couple hours to the time difference, but I'll be in Dubai for a very long, over a week. So I plan on uh, meeting some good people there, uh, networking a lot, enjoying myself, attending some parties, and of course, attending two conferences there. And I'll keep you guys updated. But overall, guys, stay strong. Stay focused. Don't let the volatility hurt you or fear you out of the market. Um, make sure you have some cash on the side. 
You know, if you have your cash on the side, what do I always say? Have 20, 25, 30% cash. If you don't have anywhere near that, you should try to get there because when you have cash, you're able to take advantage of the dips. Like yesterday, I told you, during dinner, when we saw that dip, everyone around me was taking advantage of the situation. They were all buying because they had cash on the side. So I know it's tempting sometimes to FOMO in and go all in, you know, but make sure you have some cash on the side so you can take advantage when, when you can. That's really it. All right, guys, smash the like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys later. Take care. Bye-bye.